So I am a communication design graduate and I specialised my last year in doing film, but just like graduate is an all around communication design student. And yeah, I just spent the last year building up my portfolio to make it more tailored to what I wanted to go into the industry after. And that was film for me. I did a little bit of design as well and a bit of photography, but it was primarily focused on film work. Let's jump into your room quickly. Uh, see, see, what we'll do as well, we'll plug your, your YouTube channel as well. I had, a, I had a look at your channel. Yeah. Your channel's doing well, honestly. Oh my God. I, I mean, so. she's doing all right, considering that I've got the worst pattern for filming because what my initial like plan with my YouTube was, I used to film, but well, I still try to, weekly vlogs about my progression through uni. And it was more in fourth year that I got really into it. And my lecturer was like, oh, this is really fun to send to other students and be like, oh, this is what your life will be like when you go into fourth year. It's going to be chaotic. <laughs> and then I think I'm just like setting the ballpark for all the other like previous like students that you're just going to be stressed throughout fourth year. You're going to have the worst time, but it's going to be worth it when it comes to the end of it, you hope, <laughs> when everything comes together. But it was fun. It's fun to look back on. But yeah, so that's a good hobby. <laughs> It's a really good idea, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, I, th I thought your vlogs were really entertaining as well. Which lecturer was it that suggested that? Um, well, none of my lecturers suggested that. They just found out I was doing it because okay. um, sometimes I'd mention, oh, I filmed something or I'd be filming something in class and they'd be like, oh, what are you doing with that? And I'm like, oh, it's from a YouTube channel. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, no, they were quite on board with it. They were more than keen for me to share it. And sometimes when it came to doing presentations to other years, like when I went on placement, I spoke to the third years when I was in fourth year to be like, this is what placement's like. And I just had my blog playing in the background because it like, gives you a little visual to, to see what going into design studio is like. And um, yeah, they're really, like, really happy about it. And I was like, oh, it's nice, something different. I'm quite curious, out of all your lectures, which one did you think was the most inspirational with regards to filmmaking? Um, so... I kind of took a bit of a sidetrack, to be fair, compared to everyone else in my class. Not many people, in fact, I think I've only heard of one other person really doing film within communication design, and that was Jared Cameron last year. Mm -hmm. So I don't think any of my lecturers really knows much about filmmaking, but Callum Kelly was probably the one who knew a lot about the technical side of things. He's more of a, he's not like a lecturer, he's like a, a, a technician, I think you'd probably call him. And he one that helped us build the Degree Show website. He was very on it in terms of that. And he was so handy in getting everything ready for it and played a massive part in building that. But he was the one that you'd go to to like rent cameras or speak to about lenses and stuff like that. So probably Callum. <laughs> yeah, I think it, with regards to filmmaking, uh, before I came to RGU, I studied film TV production. And I learned that you don't really learn that much in the, in the classroom you learn more by spending more times with other filmmakers and stuff. But the most I learned and where I saw the most growth and where I then started to overtake the rest of my classmates was when I realized that they were all YouTubers. And so because they were filming and editing all the time, their editing skills were getting better and better and better. So I thought, oh, wait a minute. So if I want to be like as good as them or better, then I have to do the same as well. So I, I did the same and then I saw myself kind of like progressing, getting better and better. Yeah, it's really handy, it's really, really, mm -hmm. really handy. Perfect. Right. So I'm in your room just now. And it's obviously ah, I escape. The first thing that I notice obviously is your your showreel on the wall on the right hand side. Your showreel is really good. Yeah. So I, I watched it uh in the, the link before I went into in the room as well. It's really good. The the text is animated really well. It's uh it's quite fast paced. The music is it's it's catchy as well, it's really good. The images are really sharp as well. The, the the transition work is amazing as well. It's really, really good. I haven't actually made a show really yet. I should have made one by now. I've never done it. What, what tips would you, would you give to anybody that wants to make a show really? Include your best work, the work that you really want to do for after or in the future and really hone in on making sure that it's a lot of your best shots. When I, I've had different versions of show reels. I remember the first show reel I made, um, I was doing on the train and it was with my friend and I'd turn my laptop to her and be like, what about this? And she's like, no, it's not, it's not you enough. It's not punchy enough. It's not 
it's not grabbing my attention and selling it to you. And she was able to give me such honest feedback and be like, nope, keep going, bin that, bin that, bin that. And I was just like, ah, but like her being honest and telling me to replace the clips with something better made it so much better and so much faster and edgier and sums up me a lot more. So yeah, a lot of the shots that I've used in that are from my like dream clients that I love working with. So yeah, more of what you want to do and just keep it a consistent style. So if you're more in terms of me, I like an edgy fast edit. So that's why it's quite like that. But I think from maybe people who've done a lot more film cinematic stuff, it would be maybe a bit slower and focused on like the shot and the setting. But I'm just like, I want to get in there with all my edgy stuff. It's really impressive, yeah. One of the main struggles that I often find when I'm making videos is uh, trying to find good royalty-free music that I can use in my videos. And uh, you've managed to find a song that's perfect, that goes with your show perfectly as well. Uh, what tips would you give for finding good music for your work? So I do use Epidemic Sound. That is just because I'm obviously uploading to YouTube quite regularly. I do need music for that. And then I also cut up the music you can download like the stems so that you can I'm, I'm not good with audio like I'm no not a musician but I can at least figure out where the beat is and line things up and co like cut it up and try and like place it back together so that things line up in terms of me laying things on top because I really love editing to a beat so I like my transitions to flow into the song and so I guess yeah finding a platform where you can download high quality music where you can get the stems is my top tip but other than that maybe looking for people you can like collaborate with on that and if they would appreciate like I know you shouldn't like do the whole work for free thing or I'll give you exposure thing but maybe some people on SoundCloud if they're still starting out and they're more than happy you could contact them and see because I've done that in the past as well back in the early days but nowadays I do pay for a software um, well, subs subs subscription service to Epidemic Zone. That works for me. I guess what people would want to know is um, your preferred editing software of choice and your, and your preferred camera of choice as well. Okay, so I am a Premiere Pro user. I don't know if anyone's going to hate me for that, but it's because I come from an Adobe background. I've been a designer for X amount of years and I've always, I've used different video editing in the past, but Premiere comes with the package. So it's my preferred choice. And I use After Effects as well for some of my edits and my camera. Again, people might hate on me, but I use a Canon AED um, that just does it for me because I'm also doing photography. It's not a super filmatic camera, but it does the job for me it has the flip out lens I need for vlogs. So that's, that's worked for me for the past year and a half. I've had that camera. Good. I also use Canon as well actually. I prefer colour grading with Canon. For some reason a lot of other uh, cameras, their footage is I don't know, it's a bit too dull and grey and when mm. you go grade it, it just seems way too, way too much work. Yeah. The level of concern video. Uh, do you want to talk me through how you made that? So initially um, back in March I was meant to be filming a music video with a band in Aberdeen but when lockdown happened, that wasn't going to happen. So I decided to teach myself After Effects and teach myself how to make a music video because I still really wanted to have a music video piece within my portfolio in case I wanted to work with artists in the future. And uh, 21 Pilots had released this song and it was just very fitting at the time. Like it's all about quarantine and I'm just like, I love this song so much. I can visualize what I want to do with it. So I just bit by bit animated it thinking it wouldn't take me long and I only did the first minute or so of the video just because after that point I was like I need to move on to other projects I don't want this to be a big project for me but something just to dabble within After Effects and teach myself different animation techniques and just trying out something different uh, but yeah it was really fun and I'm really happy with it it was kind of tough trying to teach myself After Effects and just not getting some of the results I wanted, but I eventually got there and I'm happy with it. It's really impressive. Yeah, it, it looks like it would have been a lot of work. I've only used After Effects once when I was making an, an intro. A very mm -hmm. small intro, a lot shorter than that, and uh, there's nowhere near that impressive in two pages. So yeah, it's, uh, it's really impressive. So next we have your photographs of the barbers at Hard Grind. 
Now, obviously, luckily it says come closer uh, above the pictures because uh, I didn't realize until I zoomed in. That mm -hmm. is actually lots and lots of different photos making up large images. That's really cool. Uh, did you want to my print there <laughs> just in the corner from my interim show? Can I get them out? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, so that's like what they are like in like actual scale. Yeah. Oh. They're fucking huge. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, no, I absolutely love them. But yeah, they're all little images and uh, it was my lecturer actually when he went and saw the room um, before we were putting them live. He was like, "You need to put up a sign to tell people to come closer." I was like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> so, that, to be fair, that was my lecturer that pointed that out. I never would have thought of that. So, yeah, it's actually really good that you can walk up right up to it and and see all the images. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm happy with those. The, the guys at Harvard must be happy as well. Yeah, it's really cool. Mm -hmm. What was it that you used to make them? So when I was working on my placement last year at Magica, they taught me how to use this software called Andrea Mosaic. And you basically import like loads of images and it can then render it into another image, but sometimes it doesn't do it perfectly. So then I remember being on my like, first week of placement, there's a vlog about this, and I had to go in and like edit all these black pixels where the image hadn't loaded and put in a photo in Photoshop and it was so dire i remember it was for a race car driver and at night time i'd go to bed and i could just see all these like images of race cars in my head i was like i need to just this project needs to be done but when it was this one i had all the photos i had so many photos over the years of working with hard grinds that the program worked really nicely so yeah it's really good so it feels it's not cheating using a program to do it but it's still quite effective i think the result you get with with the program mm -hmm. it's good yeah, it looks really cool, yeah. And I'm sure Hardbang will be happy with the photos as well, yeah. Mm -hmm. They've got them, they've got five of them up in their studio, or oh, their barbershop just now. Really? Um, they'll be reopened today. I've, I've, I've never been in, uh, I, I, I don't think I've left here. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they, do, they do beards. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but actually, I, I, I do like a nice beard in, in the winter, yeah. Um, on your wall when you first enter, you've got some behind the scenes photos. Um, would I be right in guessing that's when you were working with Snap Digital? Yes, yes. Okay, Do you want to tell me more about your work there. Yeah, so um, I initially helped Snap on their shoot for Together at Christmas, which is like their Christmas video they do with um, Aberdeen Inspired. So that was back in November, just as an assistant. And it was my first time working on set with a film company. And I was just like, wow, this is fun. I want to do this all the time now. And that was my turning point of like, cool, okay, my portfolio is just going to be film focused. I don't really want to focus on design. I've got design if I ever need a job in design. Like I've got that already, but film, I feel like I need to spend way more time on. And with that in mind, Will, the creative director there, he kept like, um, not creative director, I'd be wrong saying that. He's like, a director of sorts. I don't know his exact title, I feel really bad. Um, he kept in contact with me and he made sure that um, I was in the loop for any future shoots. So he invited me along to their shoot in February of this year for Duncan and Todd's Sonny's campaign. And my role was just to film the behind the scenes. And they set me up on a Red Raven and I just filmed the whole day, just everything happening on this massive camera that I'd never used before. And it was really fun, but intense and yeah I just loved it and I loved the result we got from it and I, I'd go in their studio after the shoot and edit with them and uh, James the editor was teaching me how to colour grade it properly because it's it's a red raven like it's a different setup and everything so mm -hmm. that was really interesting to learn from them and just have that experience so yeah that's a lot of the footage in my showreel as well because I just really want to have more experiences with them and things to do like that good shit. It was a good day. You will have designed the layout of the room yourself and colour scheme and all that as well, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to tell me more about your choices? Yeah, so um, while for the degree show, we like had focus groups throughout to, to, uh, to discuss how it was going to be built. And I was in those focus groups because I was student rep and I got to see how they were building it and what they were using and what, what was going to be the setup. So if you've been in different rooms, you'll notice that some people have different layouts because we've got to pick between like six templates or something like that 
but they were super customizable once you got your template it was just like a blank canvas and you could either just put your work up on the wall or you could change the lighting or adjust the height and scale of the building so i kind of had the big warehouse template because of the snap shoot i was like oh it'd be nice to go back to the warehouse like a sec but i made it a little bit smaller just so it didn't feel so vast because i was worried about scaling my video up too big it might look distorted so pick the warehouse and then I put the lights as like pink, blue and purple because that's like my colour scheme. Um, but then I have to like downplay the lights a wee bit. So they're just, I think, a bit more purpley pink and added in like somewhat of a neon sign with my logo, but it didn't really look very neon. I just thought, yeah, I'll try it. Um, but I just had fun with it. I was just taking a lot of inspiration from Made Brave. Their studio in Glasgow is very pink and blues and purples and I just love how they've lit it. So I was kind of trying to emulate that. Um, but just having fun with it, really, and make it something that looked interesting. Okay, uh, if you could work with... Man, I'm, not, I'm not sure about my words, because you're very interested in more to, more to adverts and stuff. I was going to ask if you work with any director, who would it be? Or... <laughs> this is when I show how I'm... This is where the difference is between actually studying film and not. <laughs> I feel very, like, imposter syndrome in terms of being a filmmaker, because I don't know much about other filmmakers or directors or anything like there's a point in we work in sketchbooks for a lot of our fourth year and there was a point in my sketchbook where I literally had pages of like like really popular directors because I didn't know anything about them I was like cool Quentin Tordino this is what he's done and this is what this person's done and this and my lecturer looked at it and she was just like wait why didn't you know any of these how do you how do you do film if you don't know these people I was like I just did it for the fun like I enjoy doing it and I don't necessarily know much about it so that's where I would say if you actually went to film school, you would learn so much more in terms of that background. Mm. And I've just kind of like, <laughs> just kind of made myself a filmmaker without knowing anything really in terms of like in-depth technique behind the scenes sort of thing that I think a lot of filmmakers should know. So that is going to be something I'm going to have to brush up on a lot more if I'm going to try and get into the industry because I, I'm terrified someone's going to ask me a question like, oh, who's your favourite director? I'd be like, blah. <laughs> so, I wouldn't yeah. worry it too much as uh, I did the H&D film and TV production course at NESCO before coming to uni. Uh, your editing is way better than the large majority of people that was on my course. So uh, yeah, I wouldn't worry too much about that because what people want is talent more than, you know, a favourite director. It is so much of skill. I think that's all the matters. And I mean, I think one of the more important things as well that, that you get from from doing filmmaking whilst at grades is when you're surrounded by different artists all the time, you can get like a lot more, um, what's, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? You can kind of like spark more creativity with, within yourself by being around the different creatives with different creative techniques and stuff. And I think that's really good for, for anybody in the creative industries to be around like different artists doing different things to kind of pick up things and learn things and stuff. So. I think as as a creative, being at grades will actually be a lot more beneficial for your work in the future than it would be, say, if you were in a classroom with me and a bunch of journalism students. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I think you've made a good choice. Yeah, it's a good, it's a really good environment to be in, like the resources you have and the, the fact that my course was, this is like one of the things some people don't like about communication design, but some people love about it it's not restricted, like you can do whatever you really want, like some people were just hoping it was a bit more focused on their specialism but then if it was focused on one you'd be people like me wouldn't be able to do what they did like I wouldn't have been able to do film and I would have had to focus on, on like graphic design or illustration or photography but because it was so open I could do all of those things and more I could go into the print rooms and do that or I could go and do some sculpture work it was very they just want you to play and have fun and just make whatever you want to make and that is one of the fundamental great things about Grays and I'm just like so happy that they're so willing and helpful in that in regards and they just want you to do whatever you want to do. Hmm. Yeah. Now I'm left doubting, should I have went to Grays over going to the media department instead? Yeah. See, I was looking at postgrads and being like, should I go do digital media now so that I've got a wee bit more like tech kind of side behind me but I'm also like I don't know if I can do a postgrad right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you need to I, I think in order to kind of work in, in, in the sense yeah I think you've already got enough skills anyway so I mean I wouldn't worry too much. Yeah. But like I said before when I spoke to the BBC they were basically saying all you need is talent 
and to be of a certain age to get food and talent recognition programs. And I was like, oh, <laughs> for the age. <laughs> okay, if you had an unlimited budget for any project, what would you make? Mm, I don't know. I've never really thought about a dream project, really. I mean, the music video that I was going to do with the guys, um, it was Van Sleep, it's a Van Aberdeen. I, I had really interesting vision for it, but I knew that I was doing it, like, next to no money. I was just doing it for the fun of fun of doing it, and I just wanted that in my portfolio. But, like, if I had, like, a ace budget for that, I would go all out, because it was just going to be filmed in, like, um, the club I work at. I was just going to ask the manager if I can just go in and film on a day that they're not open and then see if I could find other locations, but if I could book out like a proper studio, like same similar studio as what we used for the snap shoot down in Dundee, like a nice space like that. And then if I had like a red raven myself rather than having to borrow one. <laughs> but yeah. I don't know, I'm quite bad with like thinking about like money in terms of budgets and like planning things. I just kind of go like, what can I achieve right now? And usually quite budget whatever I do because it's always by myself. I don't know. I would have done that with music video probably to a very high standard. <laughs> okay, actually, my next question was going to be, what would be your, your, your dream camera? You seem to like reds. Everybody loves a red. I love a red. I mean, just from that one day of filming on it, I was just like, oh, it just looks so pretty. And then when I'm editing the footage, everything just looks so good. Like, I'm, again, not much of a expert on cameras or equipment in any, in any regard. I just kind of watch a video on YouTube and read some reviews and I'm like, all right, that, that will suit me for now. Like when I bought my Canon, I did try and research as much as possible, but there's only so much I could get with my budget and what I actually needed to do at the time. But if I was going all out for filmmaking, like filming on the Red Raven was so much fun. Heavy, but worth it. So, yeah. What would you say inspires your work the most? Um... I think what inspires me the most is trying to learn new things. With most projects, I'm like, right, what could I do that's different from the last one that I've made? What new process could I learn? And it's not probably what any filmmaker wants to hear, but like a lot of YouTubers inspire me in terms of like the, you know, the independent YouTube filmmakers is where I kind of see myself being. So the likes of uh, Daniel Schiffer or Peter McKinnon, the way they edit and the way they make their like smooth B-rolls edits I'm inspired by those I'm like cool I want to try and learn something in that regards I know it's not maybe the most like technically minded things but it's it's achievable for me and yeah I just like learning and developing more skills so I guess that's what inspires me is to learn more and be able to do more. What challenges did you face with the university closing early uh, due to COVID and with the duty show being moved online? Yeah so um, with it closing early, I used to always work in the studio. Like I would be the person that was there from ten o'clock in the morning till ten o'clock at night. I loved being in there all the time because it just it was a space to be in that separated you from your your work. Working from home, I didn't really have a space to work in. Like I had to work at like the kitchen counter or in my bed or on the couch in the living room. It wasn't ideal, so I missed the space. I missed seeing everyone because, of course, you like to bounce your ideas off of other people and getting feedback on your work is so much harder over a Zoom call or a Skype or anything like that. It's, it's not the same. And I felt like I really stunted my work process because I couldn't get my work to a point where I was happy to show it to someone. And because it was video, I felt like I had to almost have the video f finished and rendered, then send it to someone, get feedback, go back and at that point I'd be like but it's already filmed and done do I really want to reshoot this so I feel like it did stunt me in terms of like progressing and getting that one-to-one -one feedback with my lecturers and my peers but at the same time most of my major film projects had been done before lockdown happened I was quite lucky with all the hard grind stuff and the snap digital stuff happened before lockdown so I had footage to to show but there would have been more shoots that could have happened if lockdown hadn't happened which it's kind of like it's kind of everyone was affected so I feel like I was in the better half of it all like I, I still had things to work with which was good. Well with the degree show um yeah that sucked <laughs> um I think a lot of people 
it's just such a big part of your life. When when I was in college, um, so six years ago, I remember going to the degree show for the first time and I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. There's so many people here. I love seeing everyone's work. And I've been pretty much every year since then. There's maybe two years I've missed out on the opening night. And you just bump into people that you used to know. Like last year I saw one of my lecturers who left and moved back to Glasgow and I just got to catch up with him. You see people from industry, especially coming from design. We invite a lot of design agencies to come along and see our work. And it gives you a chance to network and meet these people and talk about your work one-on-one -on -one in a casual format with a drink. And it just, it just feels a lot nicer. So I think a lot of people were hit hard when they were the chance that we weren't going to get a degree show. And then when they said they were getting a, a digital degree show, it was a lot better than the likes of um, Glasgow, who I think just built a website for them. And then one of the students built a degree show. But at the same time, I think Grace have outdone themselves in terms of like the quality of degree show they've provided because a lot of other schools didn't get that opportunity. So even though we're really sad we're missing out on the physical degree show because it's such a big part of your, your career almost, we're still glad that they did something for us and they did it to a really good standard and a lot of people are really happy with it. So that's good. It's something different. Who would be your dream artist if you collaborate with? I'd say Peter McKinnon. <laughs> 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 I don't know. Or do you mean like artist in terms of... Nah, he calls himself an artist. I'd say he's still an artist. Um, I'm trying to think of like designers or something that I'm also passionate about. My mind's gone blank. No, I'm just going Peter McKinnon. That's not. <laughs> Peter McKinnon is absolutely amazing, yeah. I would feel so, like, not sure what to do, though. I'd just be like, you can make a coffee and I'll just slow, low-key film it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, my next question is, uh, what advice would you give to anybody about to start sub studying at grades? just experiment with everything. Every opportunity they give you, grab it because you never know what skills you're gonna learn and that you might really enjoy. And they give you so many opportunities to learn new things. And I, it's a shame when people don't take that on. And I feel like you're just, you're just hindering yourself if you don't do them. Obviously don't overdo it and do everything and then feel like you've got no time to do anything else. But I feel like all the workshops they provide you with they're they're invaluable like you just learn so many skills that you never know when you might want to go back to and have fun with it just play about and get to know all your lecturers use the studio it's so hard to like think about the fact that there were some kids that never came in and never used the studio and then when lockdown happened they were like oh i missed the studio and i'm like you weren't in in the first place so use the studio it's a great space that's some good advice uh, my last question is, uh, now that you graduated, what are your plans for, for the future? Um, so right now, I'm kind of taking some time to just breathe. Um, but I am looking for jobs and trying to apply for jobs in terms of like a remote working basis because a lot of places aren't really open yet and sort of freelance at the same time. I'm actually in a course at the moment as part of RGU uh, for the Creative Accelerator to help relaunch my clothing business, which I started in third year. So there's that as well. Um, so there's a few things like going on in, in the background as well as my YouTube channel, but it's just kind of playing it by ear. If I get a job, grand, if I don't, that's fine. I'll just keep plodding along until something comes up. Um, but it's just this climate to be graduating and it's just a bit daunting because nobody really knows what they're, they're a way to walk out into. But take as it comes. So you can visit my space um, in the link below. I'll also give a link for my Instagram, my YouTube, and probably my website as well. Um, that's okay. And you can check out all my stuff. If you want to contact me, I'm more than happy to answer any questions or talk to anyone. I'm a very, very nice person.